Wow. The more things change, the more they stay the, they stay the same. I can't believe it. Warner Brothers is just going to keep on Warner Brothering no matter who's in charge over there. You would think the leadership hadn't changed at all based on this latest development. So, yes, DC shocker indeed. Uh, and also one has to wonder... What would have happened if Black Adam had opened bigger? I'm sure Dwayne Johnson is sitting there wondering that right now. Did he get blindsided? I'm curious. Warner Brothers Discovery, or Warner Brothers, in fact, has a very long history of doing that. But this is, this is crazy. It's crazy to, to see such a huge decision, which, by the way, is an epic win for James Gunn. You have to tip your hat to him. It's a, like, talk about rising like a phoenix from the, from the ashes. This is incredible for him. And mostly for James Gunn. This is a great day for James Gunn. Not so great for, like, everybody else. Well, probably Henry Cavill. I think Henry Cavill, who, by the way, has zero loyalty. I'm sure he's, like, probably calling James Gunn already. Uh, but, yeah, so, so James Gunn's having a great day. His Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special trailer came out earlier. Wow, just goes to show you. Never give up. And also have a, a longtime friend like Peter Safran. Uh, so anyway, and, and this helps Peter Safran too. So Safran's not like running a charity or anything. But this is clearly not what's best for DC in terms of leveling up to the MCU. I don't think that will ever happen now, at least not in the next 10 years or so, because I think you're going to have another round of maybe damage done to the brand. I mean, we'll see. Not that DC won't be big. Well, I would say midsize. I think it'll be midsize. Uh, if I were Warner Brothers Discovery, I would cap all Gun Saffron budgets at $100 million. I'd be like, do what you need to do, but not for more than $100 million a movie. And I think they could work with that. I mean, James Gunn comes from a low-budget background. I think that he could do a lot with $100 million. And I certainly think that it will continue to generate lots of chatter, but its appeal will continue to be fractured and limited. This is classic Warner Brothers, as I just said, doing what's best for talent instead of the brand. They just... They gave James Gunn a huge kiss today. They were like, we love you. And uh, kind of a little bit of a middle finger to DC and everybody else. Uh, and Saffron, by the way, speaking of a middle finger to a lot of the fans, Saffron was in very tight with the old leadership. So, you know, it's like they, they you know, this is one of them pretty much with Emmerich, Kamada. He was tight with those guys. Uh, so we'll see. I think, in fact, DC is exactly the same. They just swapped out Hamada for... Uh, Saffron and Snyder for Gunn. But Gunn doesn't have the same large appeal that Snyder did when he was running DC. So it's like a lower level of Snyder. Uh, so that, and we don't know if it's a lower level of Hamada because Hamada never got to really show us what he could do. All right, so this is a four year deal. So strap in. It's a four year deal. So if Zazzy does try to sell Warner Brothers in 2024 when he's able to start pitching it around, James Gunn and Peter Safran are now part of that package. Will this increase or decrease Comcast, NBC Universal's interest in Warner Brothers? I feel decrease it because I think they're going to seriously dial down the appeal of the brand. So I don't think DC will be a huge franchise anymore. It'll be like what it is now. It'll, you know, it'll open like in the 60s, 70s in that range. Uh, I think with an occasional 100 million opener for sure, for sure. And also, you know, we'll talk about Matt Reeves and Todd Phillips in a second. But, you know, I mean, Comcast needs to decide if they, what about all the other brands that Warner Brothers owns, et cetera. But this is a, a, a bold and aggressive move to stick a potential new buyer with these creatives. Uh, we'll see how fans feel. How do you feel? Sound off down below. And also other creatives. I think that, you know, James Gunn intentionally casts a very large and specific shadow. So I can see a lot of other named talent being like, it's the James Gunn show. We're going to go and try and find our own show somewhere else. This leadership uh, for the main DC projects. Now, Matt Reeves and Todd Phillips, they're separate. They're separate, but it's not yet clear who they will report to. Will it also be to Gunn and Saffron, or will they report directly to Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi, who run Warner Brothers films overall? Uh, but I just, I think Gunn has, uh, you know, if you look at the past things that he's done for, I mean, we, he and Saffron have already worked for DC and Warner Brothers. They've made The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker which definitely had very strong fandoms, but not the size of anything that Marvel puts out. So it's interesting to me that they were somehow able to convince Warner Brothers Discovery that based on the moderate success of those projects, they should give them the whole thing. 
Uh, but again, I think, you no, know, never say never. I mean, Saffron did produce Aquaman, although I don't think James Wan will join this party. But, you know, you never know. Uh, James Wan kind of is similar, cut from the same cloth as these guys. Uh, so I think there could be a breakout hit here and there. But it's not going to be hit after hit after hit like Marvel has. Although maybe Marvel will continue to have some problems and bring themselves down. And so then we'll just all be in a, in a, in a, a wash in mid, as some of you have been saying. So yeah, it's a taste tonal issue. I just feel that James Gunn is limited. Uh, and Saffron, you can see the movies that he's produced for decades now, and I think you have a pretty good idea of what he can do. And there's not a lot of variation with either of these guys. They have a very specific type of product. And, very, you, and so I think you'll get more films like this. You're just gonna get more films like this. And I gotta tell you, as I've seen many people already saying on social media, and I just it's just an honest thought, I'm very worried about the future of female characters in DC under this leadership. And female characters in DC have been some of the best to date in the comic book adaptation space. Uh, Gunn and Saffron are an interesting duo. They are very old school in how they approach women and treat women. Both cast their wives in cameos in almost all of their projects, uh, even post Me Too. Uh, you would think that a lot of talent wouldn't do that anymore, but they're both like, hey, although I know a number of you are fans of their, or at least Gunn's wife's work. So, you know, that's, that's just something to consider. And of course, some fans have taken issue with how Gunn has handled female characters to date, even in his most successful projects. I've been vocal about that. I know some of you have as well. Although his core fan base doesn't care. They're perfectly content. They're like, we love it. So, you know, I just think some, so I think they'll make these projects the core fan base for Gunn, and like, I'm not sure if that's also DC fans, will say it's fine, we're fine with it, but I think it's gonna be a, a smaller group. You'll never get a movie like Wonder Woman. You'll never get that. Um, like for instance, uh, you're definitely getting a James Gunn Harley Quinn movie for sure. He wants to do it, he loves Margot Robbie, he says he should, she's the best actress he ever worked with despite all the actresses who stood with him during his scandal. So if she's willing to come back, and that's an interesting question, but they're gonna make that movie. And maybe even Gotham City Sirens. And I really worry about that in Gunn's hands. Like, we all wanna see Harley and Ivy get together on the big screen in live action, but through the lens of James Gunn, even through the producerial lens, lens of James Gunn, I just worry about how he would treat uh, a lesbian relationship based on the comments that he's made in the past. You know, it's, it's, he's worked with that creative team though. He was a guest on the animated series uh, last season, so maybe he would have the foresight to hire that team to do a live action movie of some kind. It's scary, scary stuff. All right, so anyway, before we get to these two individuals, let's talk about potential collaborations because I'm sure some of you are very curious about this. As for Dwayne Johnson, I don't know if he and Gunn can share the same space. They're both super self-promotional, which is cool, that's fine, but you can't have two self-promotional guys with each other, you know, working together. I mean, look at Gunn and Saffron. Gunn is the big star, Saffron's there being like, yeah, me too, man, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, Johnson has never worked with either of them, so there's no history there. Uh, so I would be surprised if Dwayne Johnson would even would want to move ahead under these circumstances, to be honest with you. I, I mean, the trades say Saffron has been angling to take over DC since the summer. Uh, but at the Black Adam premiere, Dwayne Johnson was telling everybody that he would be happy to advise Warner Brothers Discovery on who they should hire to run DC. So obviously he was not privy to this co these conversations. And you know, one has to wonder again if he was blindsided by this deal coming, you know, uh, the day, you know, two days after the end of the first weekend for Black Adam. Again, if Black Adam had opened bigger, we might having be having a very different conversation right now. Although I don't love the way the female characters were handled in Black Adam either. All right, so anyway. All right, so a lot of you don't, don't care about Dwayne Johnson's future at DC. You care about the Snyderverse. And the news on this front is mixed. James Gunn and Zack Snyder do go way back to the start of their careers. And they do have similar tastes, although they haven't talked for a while, uh, of their own admittance. But would Zack Snyder want to come back and work for James Gunn in a franchise where Zack was once the one in charge? I, I think that's unlikely. Uh, so while it's hard to tell if Zack Snyder himself will return, I do think there's a strong chance that just like Dwayne Johnson, Gunn will build on what Zack Snyder built rather than tear it down. Henry Cavill is a fantastic Superman for Gunn's version of DC. He fits in perfectly. So why anger fans? Especially when Gunn, you know, again, Gunn is all about his own vision. I don't think he's particularly interested in casting a wider net. You know, he's gonna be like, who do I think is cool? Oh, look, I see a huge fandom here. Can I co-opt it? 
Can he co-opt it? I see Snyder fans are pretty upset today, a lot of you. Um, you know, it's tough for you guys. You know, you, you, you fight with everybody. But anyway, I mean, it depends. Are you only happy if Zack Snyder comes back? Or will you be okay if that just means Henry Cavill is coming back and the other actors? I think those, I mean, although I don't know how Gal Gadot's going to feel about this. Um, you know, it's it's a little like, almost like a variation on Joss Whedon taking over. So, I mean, you know, we'll see what happens there. Uh, also, James Gunn has an amazing relationship with Kevin Feige. They're bros! So if anyone, anyone could get a Marvel DC crossover going, it's James Gunn. And he also has the, has the chutzpah to ask. Maybe not any of the really big characters, but I could see him getting something. I could see something happening. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not anytime soon. But I would bet you that if James Gunn has a to-do list for DC, now that he's running it, it's a Marvel crossover. A Marvel crossover is on that list. And he will keep working on it and chipping away until he gets it. Because it would be quite the feather in his cap. And that's interesting. That's like, you know, just like Dwayne Johnson, James Gunn cares a lot about feathers in his cap rather than like the brand overall. I mean, don't make a mistake. Kevin Feige's very aggressive and competitive, but you know, he, um, and he's puts himself out, out front for a lot of things, but you know, he, he, he's not, it's, it's a different vibe as I'm sure you can see. Uh, also, will Kevin Feige continue to play as rough with DC now that his pal Gunn is in charge? And will the sometimes very vocal Gunn, maybe some would argue too vocal, call him out on it? It'll be interesting to watch if their friendship grows stronger, stays the same, or dies. All right, now let's talk Gunn, and then we'll talk about Peter Safran. Again, huge win for Gunn, who clearly only got a temporary reprieve from Disney Marvel so that he, complete, he could complete his Guardians trilogy. But he's come roaring back as the head of the rival brand. Wow. Even if Gunn doesn't, beco doesn't become DC's Feige in terms of success, and I don't believe that he will, he will certainly be getting Kevin Feige levels of exposure, which I'm sure was a pretty sweet part of the deal for James Gunn. He'll be heading up every Comic-Con presentation. He'll be on every premiere red carpet, participating in every press junket. Let's just hope he's hired a very good publicist who helps him watch what he says because we all know that James Gunn is not so great off the cuff. Interestingly, interestingly, Gunn will primarily be an executive, supposedly, we'll see, helming a project here and there. And it's rare for a creative to go behind a desk like this. But I think after what happened with his tweets in Marvel, Disney Marvel, Gunn likely didn't have a ton of options at the same level, and he didn't want to lose ground. And this offers him a chance, well, not offers him a chance, he has gained ground. So this is just, I'm sure he's very happy today, as he should be. As for Saffron, he and Gunn go way back. And he, I'm sure Saffron was glad he invested in this relationship because look how far it's allowed Saffron to take himself. Saffron even got a special thanks on Gunn's directorial debut, Slither. Saffron started out as a talent, man started out as a talent manager before becoming a producer, and he has deep connections in the industry. He worked for Brillstone, Brillstein Gray, one of the biggest management companies there. So, like Everybody who's everybody was with, was, was with that company. Gunn might have been represented by him. I couldn't find out if he was, but maybe that's where their relationship began. Uh, at Warner Brothers, Saffron was a, also a huge producer in their horror division. You know, uh, Warner Brothers likes to farm out their stuff to outside producers instead of having in-house people really run their division. Uh, and Saffron was really big in the horror space. Uh, so that means he worked and knows, uh, worked with and knows Walter Hamada extremely well. Uh, and also he knows all that horror talent very well. He has been a producer in almost all of James Wan's big movies. So expect Wan to be at least asked to stick around and we'll see if James Wan says yes. I'm not sure, as I said, how big name behind the camera talent will feel about this, having to be in James Gunn's shadow. But Gunn can just pull a Feige and hire mostly new and undiscovered uh, behind the camera talent and also all of his pals in the industry. James Gunn has a lot of friends from his trauma days and all that stuff. He could hire these people. I don't think that would be great for DC, but you know, these are people that he could hire. All right, so as always, we'll see what happens. The bottom line is the box office. That's what we're really gonna be looking at. But because uh, I, I think on social media and stuff, it, it, you know, people will at least be talking. So just again, Huge win for James Gunn. Expect Henry Cavill and Margot Robbie to stick around big time. Uh, for DC to continue to have a more limited audience and fractured audience than Marvel. And while we know what kind of director writer Gunn is, uh, we'll see what kind of executive he is. That does remain to be seen. Plus, we'll see what Matt Reeves and Todd Phillips do in their separate DC spaces. Although Gunn takes up a lot of air in the room. So I think it's going to be tough for them, to be honest with you.
All right, so what do you think? What do you think? I think they'll still do stuff, but I think it'll be pared down. I think it'll be pared down. What do you think? I'll be interesting to see what projects they start to announce first. I'm, it's, I bet you it's a Harley Quinn project, but let's see. What do you think? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.